No, hello, there is no giveaway today. Nomad Z, looking at you. I pounced on you, pounce! pounce. Yes, yes, there is, actually. Huh? What? There is? Oh, yeah, right, 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 Gurgi's giveaway. Gurgi's giveaway. Right, right. Well, don't start Correct. anything. Or is are we starting it now? Oh, okay, yeah, we did. Okay, the bot did. So, my mistake, yeah. my mistake. You don't get my giveaway until next week. Good morning, Correct. world. It's Friday, thank God. <laughs> I hope you all are doing well. This is Anne, your host of... Reaper Pro Tips. Today we are working on Juliana Herbalist again because I just decided I wanted to. So yeah, you know, as good a reason as any. I have no particular goal for today. I have no particular topic for today. We're just going to work on the dang herbalist. We might do hair, we might do apron, we might do her scythe. It's actually not a bad subject for an MM, although it's tiny. Um, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, I need the weekend too, real chibi. I seriously do. I've been working very hard this week. So I feel like I earned my weekend. All right. That's a hashtag freeze. So what is Gurgi giving away? Gurgi, what are you giving away? He is giving away three gift subs for $10 and a, a 9970 starter kit paint set. Ooh, cool. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, today is my, my hop on painting, back on painting, uh, also real chibi. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. So we got a hashtag for you because Gurgi is awesome because it's his birthday. So do do re-wish Gurgi happy birthday and thank you. Um, and we will just, yeah, we're just going to write. <laughs> Sorry, Nikki. <laughs> My Patreon video on 28 millimeter faces and I have supernatural powers. No, no, it's all thinned paint and just little tiny bits of paint on the brush and a very good brush. That's all it is. That's all you need to learn. Seriously, seriously. Do I have her? I do have her right here. Maybe I can put her up on the up on the screen. So yeah, yeah. All right. So supernatural powers or no supernatural powers. So there's Juliana. So let's see. Let's uh, let's try to get. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah, there's uh, there's our faces. Yeah, yeah. So I did a video on my Patreon. If you haven't gone there on twenty eight millimeter faces, and if you aren't a patron, it's patreon.com slash painting big. And uh, this was the model, and it's only at the $2 level. It's actually a huge, long video at the $2 level. I wanted to make the $2 video short, but I wanted to also include all the information. So it is a 30-minute video. It is a huge bargain. So if you're not my patron, like, you should at least go over and sub for, you know, two days and <laughs> grab the $2, uh, $2 content. Because, uh, yeah, I did uh, 28 millimeter faces, and I talk about how to thin your paint, and I talk about how I build different layers, and so, and this is the model I used. So yeah, that's it. And let's go and do another model now. Poof. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Juliana's cute. And you know what? I didn't even notice Inara. I didn't even notice she had hedgehogs until this morning when I was like, oh my God, David, she has hedgehogs. Like there's a tiny little hedgehog there. And I always thought it was a pine cone or something. <laughs> I don't know. And there's another one. There's another little tiny hedgehog friend back here. So, uh, so yeah. It's, uh, it's impressive. I like, I didn't realize. And they are actually little hedge hedgehogs. So they do have actually little eyeballs and little spines. So yay, Bobby. I think, bo yep, it was, it was indeed B. Jackson who did these hedgehogs. So Bobby props for the sculpt. Uh, yeah. A makeup miniature flower crown for one. That is beyond my green stuff skills. I don't think I could, you could do that unless you actually were doing it in ZBrush or a chibi. Then you could do it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I know, right? You you look at the model and you never even and you just see stuff on the on the ground and you just never even think that are tiny hedgehogs, but they are indeed tiny little hedgehogs. So now you know. Now all of you who don't own this model, ta da, can run out and buy her. <laughs> you don't you do not have to do the stripey dress that I did, however, or the sunburn skin. Although I think I might, I might bring her skin up a little bit. It's, it's reading just a little bit dark for me. I mean, it looks like she's freshly sunburned and I want to bring up her skin just a little bit, I think. So anyway, um, what do you guys want to do today? Like I, uh, thought about doing some, the apron and the hair. I was thinking about making her a brunette, but maybe doing some lighter gold streaks, like working it up a bit. So like, she's got like kind of bleached hair, like sun bleached. Cause she would, right? She's an outdoorsy type. Um, and I could use my, uh, brunette hair mix, but, uh, switch it up a little bit. What do you guys think? I think, 
I think I, I think that's actually a pretty good idea. I can block the apron too because I want it to be a cream color. I want it to be neutral. When you've got this many bright colors on a model and intense colors, and even the skin is kind of off neutral because I wanted to make her sunburned and really weathered, um, then uh, you know it's good to go with neutrals wherever you can elsewhere so that you don't get yourself in a real color quandary. Uh, so yeah, yeah, the hair. I mean, it's hard to do this hair. This I'm not a big fan of like the big chunks of hair, but I can at least show you guys how to kind of deal with it. Um, I I personally like to actually add some green stuff to make the 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 uh, strands the the deeps there to make the the areas between strands to make them a little less deep. Um, but I didn't have time to do that with her, so we'll just paint her as is. Um, fat fingers are a okay. Um, Dabber, actually, I did this on stream. So if you search for Juliana, if you search um, search our YouTube for her item number, which is four four zero one seven, you should find my first stream on how to do this. I did the I did the stripes. I, I blacked all the stripes in, and I did the shiny cloth effect on the on the lower part. So it's really, I think, actually, it is one of my better streams, and I think it's worth watching. You also get to see Collins come in in the chat and go stripes because apparently that's Collins. I didn't know that stripes were so entertaining to him. But anyway, so let's look at brunette. Usually I start really d dark with brunette with black and brown. However, um, if I'm going to make her hair more sun streaked, then I want to start a little lighter because I know that I'm going to be taking my highlights up to a really like a blonde color, right? So normally my progression of colors for brunette hair, let me grab, grab things. I know I've got all the colors to hand because they're colors that I use a lot. It's more like, kind of like this. So instead of starting with the black and brown, I'm probably going to start with a mix of chestnut gold and russet. Um, and then uh, take that down and up. The color, the range of uh, shade or highlight that you start with, at least when you're layering, when you're doing the well palette, traditional painting style, um, really emphasis, really changes how the color looks unless you work really hard. So like if you start really dark, you're going to find that your hair looks darker usually at the end, unless you put in a lot of effort or time or you, or you accidentally cover over all those shadows. Um, but I find that if I start with a lighter color, everything looks, looks much lighter, uh, especially it's over a white base coat. This is in particular, or in this case, a light gray with the bones. Um, just because when you start with a lighter color, you tend to, you know, get a, a lighter finish right away over a pale color. Um, if you start with a dark, you're more looking like you're going to make the model look more like you started with a uh, black primer when you try to add colors over the top of it, depending on the opacity of the colors and all the rest. But I want this hair to look a little bit lighter and, and I want to bring it up to like chestnut plus white, maybe chestnut plus a bit of yellow and white for the sun streaks to bring it up to blonde. I could also just bring it up to a blonde color, to blonde hair, like 9257. That would work fine. Um, um, what skin tone? I actually mixed it, Gurgi, and once again, I think I did this on stream. I did a sunburn, uh, sunburn skin on stream. I showed people how they could do it. Uh, so I think it was tan skin. It's usually when I do sunburn, it's tan skin plus a, uh, a dark brownish red. Um, and I don't remember which one I used for this. But uh, essentially, this is, if you have sunburn skin from HD, that would be very similar because that's kind of what I custom mixed. It really does work. It really does look like sunburned skin. So, but I think I'm going to bring her up. I'm going to bring her up a bit, but it depends. Like when, when I get the hair down, then I'm going to know if I have to alter the skin. Because remember, the minute you put a color down, the minute everything changes. So right now her skin is kind of sitting in isolation up there um, with gray hair. And uh, certainly we could paint her as an old lady, but let's not. Do, 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 do. I know I've been mixing a lot more on stream lately, uh, just because that's the way I tend to roll. So hopefully that's not leaving you guys in the dust or making you feel like intimidated, because really it's, I mean, I try to keep it pretty simple with my mixes and always do like two colors. Probably the most um, crazy my mixes get is when I'm just, it, it, or at least they're going to look crazy, is when I'm just taking a brush full of this and adding some white. But that's like, anybody can do that. That's That's like standard highlight mixing is... The simplest of highlight mixing. So I'm going to do a 50-50 mix of uh, 91, 99, russet. I'm going to add a couple more drops because my AC is on, so I know this paint is going to want to dry fast. Do, do, do. There. Excellent. Now let us base coat. Mix and base coat. Where's my mixy brush? There's my mixy brush. 
And I want, I'm gonna mix it just straight up because I'm doing a base coat, so. And I'm gonna see if this is the color I'm really looking for. I kind of like it. It's a very rich, um, saturated brown. And we want that, right? We want we want that because this, color, this model already has vibrant colors on it. No, not at all, Griggy. I just have to bring it up um, more. She is very red, you will see. It, though she looks less red if my palette isn't in the frame. There we go. That's more her skin tone. There you go. No, with something this reddish, this is definitely like a more weathered Caucasian skin or a very pink Caucasian skin. Um, it's not as dark as it looked when I had my palette in there. So this is this is very much what her skin looks like in person as I look on the camera. Um, but yeah, I wanted to have her skin be definitely reddened by the weather. And like I said, I want to keep I want to bring it up maybe a little bit more. Um, because it does look very red right now, but that may change. Like as I add other colors, this may change. Um, so I'm always telling you guys things, uh, the skin may look better or worse after I add this hair color. Anyway, so we're going for a very vibrant color because she otherwise has vibrant colors on her. So if we went for a more muted color, it would fight with the stuff that we've got on her. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. But yeah, it's a, it's a mix of tan skin and uh, some reddish color, reddish brown. Usually I use, uh, my favorite color to use to make this kind of skin tone would be tan skin 94 or 9044 and uh, mahogany um, brown, which is 9070, which is very red. So we're going to take our brown, we're going to put it down, we're going to see how that changes everything. And I'm going to probably tune her skin after that. This is why, um, and you know... This whole quality of paint to change the colors of things that it goes next to or to change the appearance of colors is why I tend to do like, I always come back at the end, quote unquote, of my models and adjust them because uh, sometimes you paint something and then you change it, you highlight it, you, uh, you decide to take it lighter or darker and it kind of shifts the colors all around it and then you have to kind of maybe add an extra highlight or maybe you want to add a deeper shadow or a different color shadow or something. Yeah, I think this is a really good color for sun bleached brown hair, actually. This is a good base. Um, so you always uh, kind of assess your model as you go. If something starts to look dull because you've highlighted something else, you know, much more extensively, then maybe you need to add another highlight onto that dull thing so that it doesn't look that way. Let's see here. Hey there, Crowley Hamster. I'm actually turning off my AC because I'm getting cold. This is the eternal uh, quandary of Anne, is that I always want the AC on, but the vent is in this room. The vent blows right on me, so I'm like, then I get to freezing re relatively quickly. <laughs> I'm going to do a braid. Maybe we'll paint the braid, too. Braids are fun to paint. Do, 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 do. And another thing to note is that um, since I chose to use russet brown, a mixture of russet brown on the hair here, I will probably also use russet brown in the browns for, say, her bag. Um, I won't use this mixture, but I'll probably use a darker mixture for the bag to make it you know, stand out. But I'll still utilize russet brown in it, whether it's for a highlight or a mix for a base. Um, I like to keep my neutrals just like my other colors, I like to repeat colors around the model, and uh, and that includes the neutrals. So I'm not the person who reaches for five different colors of leather, typically. Um, I will try to use kind of the same hue and vary it lighter, darker, tweak it a little bit, but use it so that everything harmonizes. Let's see here. What else? Her little boots can be brown. I might make the boots. Yeah, I do want to make the boots a lighter color. So I am actually going to make the boots right now the same color as the hair, at least the same base. This doesn't mean that they're going to come out looking the same way. But I know that this bag is probably going to be a really dark brown. Maybe even I might even go black with it, depending on how much contrast I need. Um, so I want her boots to actually be lighter and to not be the same color as the bag. I want everything to stand out. Remember, it's all about contrast. We have here an, an evil broccoli base that we must paint also. I've never been a big fan of the broccoli. This broccoli is better than most. Let's 
Okay, we got our little feet base coated there. All right. Do do do. Let's see here. Ha ha ha. That sounds like me, Magnetic Company. It's like AC on and a flannel on. Yeah, that sounds perfect. <laughs> you bet. Yes, yes, we do have a hashtag free today. Uh, I disagree. I don't know. I, I prefer to be able to sculpt up basing that I want in Aura. So for me, it's like, I kind of like, it's like I'd, I'd like a Slata or, or a sculpted base that actually is something like rocks. And then it's much easier to take that broccoli base and in, integrate it into uh, a bigger base to, to landscape it. Kind of like I did, uh, I'm doing on my paint along piece for the Patreon. So this dragon kin from Dark Sword comes on this rock. Um, this rock base right here. And then we just sculpted additional rocky terrain around it to uh, to fill it in and put him more in, in a scenic environment. And that's what I kind of prefer to do. I'd rather the model be on something that I can blend in. Um, this isn't too bad, but it just means that, uh, well, with the additional base here, I know uh, it's going to be hard to kind of blend in. Unless I do her, do her on a little hill, which is doable. Doing her on a little hill, putting her on a bigger base. But I like to have um, the model on like a black plastic base just because then I don't have to worry about this rim rubbing off after I paint it. So that is just me and my gaming preferences. All right, so we've got a nice hair color. Oh, I missed a strand back here. I like this hair. This is pretty good. So the first thing I'm going to do is block in my shadows, I think. I don't want to take the hair too dark takes a little bit of brush control to get this little strand down here. There we go. That's a little better. All right. Do I like this hair color on her? Yeah, I do actually. It actually makes her, notice how it makes her skin look lighter to give her a darker hair. If I'd made her blonde, it would make her skin look really dark. So as you add colors, everything changes. Oh, there's probably a, probably a mold line. There's almost always mold line Cranston. Because these are these aren't models I'm necessarily painting for anything other than the stream, so I mean, if I was painting it for a Reaper, I would have cleaned it, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm just painting it on stream. So often, uh, I just don't want to waste the time to clean. Um, in general, she's been cleaned up pretty well. Although no, she's still got a big mold line over here too. So you can see that's just the way it is. Um, mold line cleaning takes quite a while, and uh, it, unless I'm going to do the model. Like if the model's for commission or the model's for going to be sold later or whatever, then uh, I don't bother with it because I'd rather just paint for you guys because that's what you're here to see. <laughs> so I don't waste time on it. I suppose I could do a, a stream on mold line cleaning and just clean all my models that I'm planning to work on. I'm going to grab some black and brown um, for the next, you know, few weeks. But that seems kind of boring to me. But yeah, I use a knife to remove bold mold lines typically. I did get the mold line down the top because it was annoying me, but that was right before the stream and I still didn't get it very well. So, uh, broccoli base, super ego, this little pitted surface, and you see it on a lot of old Reaper bases too, where it's just kind of like little, little pitted ground. And what they're trying to do is give you kind of an earth texture, just a generic earth texture, but we always thought it looks like broccoli. I think Sandy Garrity was the first to do it. Um, so broccoli base is, is kind of the term, um, in Reaper at Reaper for the kind of fill base where you're just trying to suggest some, some earthy terrain, um, that's really generic. So, but yeah, it always, in the old, old figures, you always joke that it looks like broccoli. So. Yeah, I have friends like that, but I'm definitely, I tolerate heat a little bit better, but here, here I'm spoiled because with this AC in this room, I'm just like totally spoiled. I try to get it to my perfect temperature. Mostly I just don't like being really cold or really hot while I'm streaming though. And in this small room, especially if David and Kiri and me are all in here, plus my lights, which are big, um, at least this one is, uh, that just puts off heat. So sometimes it takes some adjustment. Uh, yeah. Doot. All right, let's see here. So we got some black and brown. You could also use walnut for this. Um, you could use muddy soil in the dirt triads would be a good uh, hair shader for brunette. Um, you really just want something relatively warm and, and relatively dark, uh, all things considered. You could use brown liner, brown liner. The liner colors actually can be very good hair shaders. 
But today, since I normally start with black and brown for a dark brunette, I'm just gonna use black and brown. And I've got about four drops in there and I'm gonna add two drops of water. Need to remember to refill my water bottles this, uh, this weekend. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. What do we got? Yeah, I'm very happy with my lighting setup, but my big um, right-hand light is it's quite large. It's a big ring light. And uh, although I adore the amount of light that it puts out, um, it also does give off a little bit of heat. So just a little, just because it's big. Alrighty. So we're going to, we thin it down to uh, two to one paint to water. We're going to shade in a couple places. So a natural shadow with the light falling in on the top of the head, you're naturally going to get a highlight up on the crown of the head. And you're going to get your first shadow kind of where that hair drops off. And you're going to recognize when I say this, that it's a lot like how we do NMM. And indeed, hair and metal have something in common. Both are shiny. So if some of this technique seems like it's the NMM technique that I was using on the chest for Rocky this week, uh, you'd be right. Uh, so essentially, we just want a little bit of a shadow there. And then we want to uh, go in between these. We're going to assume that these uh, big strands are locks of hair. So we're going to shade in between those. We're going to shade a little bit closer to this uh, where the hair is bunching up near the scrunchie here that she's got on. Her little hair tie. And I'm going to use a stroke that mimics the strands of hair. So I'm using an up and down stroke on these long vertical surfaces. And I don't want to blend it in necessarily. I like a little bit of brush strokes. Um. <laughs> That's funny, Tristanoma. Oh, I just use I just use tap or whatever. I mean, it, if I have filtered water, I use it. But where I am, it's not a big deal. Essentially, okay, um, Grim, if you... Unless you live in an inner city area or an area with old pipes, you really don't have to worry about your water. And the reason, or if, or if you've got like really soft or hard water, like, you know, if you've got a lot of mineral content in your water, then by all means use filtered or distilled or whatever you want to do. But otherwise it doesn't matter. Most areas in this country you can use tap and it's fine. Yeah, it's only when you've got a lot of mineral content in your water that you want to maybe use something else for painting. And that's just because, you know, a heavy mineral content will, will affect the way the paint dries and, and works. Especially with things like airbrushing. A lot of people just use distilled just for their airbrush because they don't want any buildup at all. And I don't blame them on that one. But most areas, like it, when at home in Wisconsin, where, my, where I grew up, we had really hard water. We had to use a water softener. So there, you probably, like a place like that, you probably want to use um, filtered or, or distilled either way. I find it annoyed, annoying to um, keep distilled water in the house all the time when I only use it for that one thing. Uh, so I just don't, and I'll just use filtered water instead or bottled if I have a bottle of spring water. All right, so we got a little bit of a shadow going on. Yeah, so hard water means you, you do want to use something a little bit different probably. I mean, I've never done experiments to see how the paint is affected by using hard water. And I have painted at home at my parents' place, at my old home. Um, and I do think I just used water right out of the tap. So, And I, I don't know that it really affected much. But over time, if you airbrush or something, you might notice some buildup. So it's up to you, you know. It's always up to you. It's a personal personal choice, in my opinion. Unless you notice a definite effect where you, you do not like it. But usually um, when I'm painting at my parents' house, it's just because I'm home visiting and I've brought work along with me. So it's not like I'm painting there for, you know, weeks on end where I would really start to notice differences. And I uh, get again between these strands. I want to get the underside of the braid because it's going to be in shadow. And 
And if you decide the black and brown is too harsh, just mix it with a little bit of your base color and that will uh, make it play better. Putting a shadow where the braid comes out from behind her shoulder because you're not really gonna see it. I'm gonna line between the braid and the purple. Yeah, if you've got really quote unquote crusty water, that's gross sounding, um, by all means, you know, use, uh, use distilled if you wish. I just never tell people that they need to use distilled because so many places in the U.S. are just fine. I don't like to overcomplicate the painting process if I can help it. Alrighty, so we got, it looks like uh, these little braid bits. This little braid bit. I'm just going to line between the braids. So each each little braid bit. Now these come together really oddly. I'm trying to figure out how they're coming together. I think they come together in the center on the top, more or less. Sometimes a sculpt can make things hard on this, but in general you want to line between your braids, your braid, your little chunks of braid with your hair shadow because you want these to stand out as we highlight. Alrighty, so we've got a shadow around the crown of the head. And the reason for this, as I mentioned earlier, is that hair has something in common with NMM. And the thing that it has in common with NMM is that it's shiny. Uh, so it's, uh, it's got that in common because it's shiny. Remember the thing that makes things look shiny is to put a highlight next to a shadow on the surface. Um, a, a bright highlight and a dark shadow together on a surface make the eyes start to start to, uh, in, uh, wow, my brain just failed on word. Um, the brain will think that it's shiny. It's like, that's, that's a visual effect of a shiny thing. That's what light does. So that's how we interpret it. And uh, hair is definitely shiny unless you have very dirty hair. So that's what we're doing it that way. One second. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah I mean, you have a point. Oh, with lean torn, whatever makes you feel like, you know, that you're not going to regret it later, Grim. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it'll definitely, yeah, an iron, an iron with the high evaporation rate, definitely you see. My mom always got calcium, you know, or buildup on her uh, iron when I was growing up. Um, the crown is up on top, but you want the shadow just under it. So it's, the crown is exactly where a crown would sit. And that's where our highlight is going to go. We're just not there. I decided to block in the shadow first. So there's kind of a line. You can see it. And it's where the hair starts to fall off vertically. So right above that, we're going to have shinies. And on the braid, we're a little bit more... Uh, there you're, you, you aren't able to follow the shape as much, obviously, because you've got these little chunks of hair. So you're just going to highlight those as you go. Um, you don't really, there isn't really a micro shadow there or room to make one. So yeah. All right, good. We've caught up. All right. So cool. Um, the other place I'll often put a shadow is down the exact center of the hair. And uh, the exception to this is if I'm working on a model which has a colored skin tone and I'm working with, say, lighter hair, uh, I will usually actually use that shadow um, as the skin tone shadow color to imply that you can see. Like for drow and stuff, if I've got a purple skin tone and silver hair, I'll use that purple down the middle of the part so that it implies the skin tone through the hair. And it's a nice uh, touch to make it a little more natural. Right, you can see where the highlights should fall, right? You can see it right in that photo right there. You can see that this hair is looking lighter. It's just the paint reflecting the light, but it's exact reflecting it exactly where it should be. So now you know where to put your highlight, right? 
So let's see here. Let's mix up a couple more colors. I want my pure one, two, three, four, five, six drops of chestnut gold. That's 9073. And I'm actually going to put a drop of pure white in there because I want a little bit more of a golden color as this hair starts to come up. And uh, chestnut gold has a lot of ochre in it, so yellow ochre. So it's going to come up more golden when you add um, water uh, white to it. Now I do want to thin this because I'm doing highlights now. Whenever you add highlights, you need to thin. So for now, I'm going three to one. I'm probably going to have to go more like two to one. And the reason is that I've added white. Whenever you have a lighter color, you have to thin more to make it look right, to make it translucent. But that's a pretty good start. So again, we're going to notice it's a pretty vibrant color, the, the 9073. So because of she's got such bright colors on her dress, we're going to go with more vibrant hair color. Alrighty. So let's put some streaks in her hair. We're going to do some general highlights first, and then I may actually come back and put some lighter. I'm wondering if I want lighter strands around her face or if I just want to apply lighter strands. It's difficult um, to do hair effects like streaks convincingly on a 28 millimeter. Um, and the reason is that you're, you're trying so hard to make hair look like hair that doing any additional special effects like salt and pepper or something like that are very difficult because they interfere the color themselves then interfere with the highlighting you're trying to do like the effect of the highlighting with the highlights and shadows and so it really uh, kind of messes with the whole effect so you have to be really um, gentle about it and sometimes it's just not going to work quite right so we're going to try it we're going to essentially highlight the hair normally and see if i can just suggest it from the colors i'm using the fact that i'm taking this brown hair up to golden with the highlights may suggest enough that we have a kind of a sun uh, streaked hair. If not, then I may very cautiously interrupt my shadow band here with a couple of paler strands, but you really got to be delicate with it. And the same as if you're doing salt and pepper hair um, is you really have to highlight and shade it like gray hair and then maybe introduce some little streaks of black and white um, and try not to totally upset your effect. Alrighty. Yeah, remember there is a hashtag free today because it's Gurgi's birthday. All month. It's all month Gurgi's birthday. So, all right. So now the other thing that, uh, now here's the thing that hair does not have in common with metal. So we know that it's shiny, but unlike metal, which is of course opaque, it's solid metal, right? Hair is transparent. It's translucent. What light passes through it. And this means that when you highlight hair, you want to do it on a bell curve, which means you've got a shadow, mid-tone, highlight, mid-tone, shadow. So you just go in a bell curve that way with the highlight at the top, or in this case, in the middle. Um, and that's generally because the, normally on metal, you'd put the highlight here, but the minute the hair fell away from the light, it would go dark, right? But because hair is transparent, the light is passing through here. So you get more of a, a highlight even on the underside, which is transmitted light. Um, and that's kind of a cue, a clue on how to do good hair. You could, I mean, Sergio is fond of saying, you can paint hair like NMM and everybody will think it looks amazing, but it won't be right. And he's right. It's not the way that light acts. So I have to uh, try to avoid um, taking my golden highlight all the way up to my shadow. And if I do, I have to introduce more of my midtone. One thing these clump clump hair sculpts is good for, are good for is I suppose um, really separating out those those areas so it makes it easy to go from your shadow to your midtone to highlight to midtone to shadow again because it's very clearly sculpted. It's just hard sometimes to suggest individual strands or anything. I may have gone too down down too far with my shadow here. So I'm going to actually reintroduce some of my the shadow won't take up too much room. So I'm going to bring my uh, 
mid-tone and highlight back up a bit in the hair. Make my shadow very small on the back of the head. There you see it. You can still see it, but it's, a, it's more minimized and that's what you want. I, you know, did you guys know, here's, here's a piece of Anne trivia. Hair was the absolute latest thing, the last thing that I learned how to paint. I knew how to do NMM before I could do decent hair. Like, hair was my most hated topic for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> so if I could do it, you can do it. Because, oh my gosh, it took me years. It took me years. I understood metal and I didn't understand hair. And I had people surrounding me like Sue Wachowski and Jennifer Haley who could do amazing hair. So there was really no excuse for me not grokking how hair worked. Um, so yeah. But it was the weirdness of the shiny and translucence thing that used to get me and I think confused ever confused me and a lot of people. And again, I'm always doing a stroke that's in line with the way the hair is flowing. And I don't care if I leave brush strokes. I want brush strokes. I want to suggest that the hair is softer. And so I don't want strong demarcations and I don't want perfectly smooth blends either. Um, I think this is starting to come up and look sunstreaked really well, actually. And that's the color. Um, I did the hair triads just because I was fielding so many questions, Grim, about what colors to use for blonde hair. Essentially, I was sick of seeing people paint yellow, paint blonde hair yellow. And uh, when I looked at my paint selection, there was no easy answer for them when they asked what color to paint blonde hair. So I created the blonde hair triad especially because people needed help and they needed like an easy answer. You can always like get more confident as a painter and progress to a harder answer, right? You can always progress to the point where you want to custom mix something, for example. But when you're um, just starting to understand how to do things, it can be a lot more difficult. So... That's why I did that and the red hair triad, because again, the answer for how do I paint red hair was really hard. It was like, well, you got to grab this color and then this other color for a shadow and this other color for a highlight and then mix in some orange and, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So uh, it was just, it was, uh, it's, it, uh, teaching at paint club while I created the paint line always informed my process. And teaching at ReaperCon too, because I'd get really valid questions, and uh, and have to figure out, you know, well, is there is there an easy answer for this? If there isn't, can I make one? So here on the braid, I'm really just going to concentrate my highlights uh, toward the end of each braid, probably, um, because I want uh, I want some contrast, and so toward the end of each little clump, you've got that shadow of lining that we did. And if you can, try to kind of suggest a couple strands in there. Um, if they're not sculpted in, it can be a little harder. You kind of have to extemporize, extemporize something like that. Words. You have to words. Um, and, uh, yeah, my vocabulary is apparently a fail today. But if you can suggest the little bits of hair coming together and toward, the, toward where they meet, and that happens to be on the top of the braid here, so that's just about perfect. And just put little highlights. And then on the end of the hair, this is mostly facing the light. And then the middle of the strand here is facing the light. And the middle of the front is facing the light. And then the tip will get a little bit of light. So that's coming along pretty well. And a lot of people would stop here, but you don't want to stop here. You want to keep going. There's more. There's more you can do. And you want to make sure that you do hit the hair right around her face at the top of the head. So like the crown here that I'm talking about where the highlight's going to go. Make sure you hit the strands in the front because they're going to hit the light. And uh, sometimes you accidentally highlight the side of a strand, but then when you look at the model face on, that color hasn't... Uh, doesn't appear like isn't evident to the eye so do highlight the front of those strands as well there alrighty that's okay that's that's coming along I like that side I like the back quite a bit 
Yeah, this side's pretty good, but I lost some, uh, I've got this transition from dark to light here. I lost some of my mid-tone is what that means. And that's a common thing that happens. Um, yeah, I mean, you watch out here and you see how it goes, right? See, there's your dark part and there's your highlight with your brightest highlight. And then it goes down to shadow and then it goes here. See, indeedy. Look at anybody's hair around you. And everybody wears a hair differently, so you can start to notice differences in how the light, uh, yeah, and, and how the light interacts with rays, colors, and, and uh, hairstyles. Alrighty, so I want to kind of take this, uh, I feel like I've got straight from highlight to shadow. I want to take this dark shadow up a little bit. So I'm going to take my mid-tone that we started with, the base coat, and I'm going to play with that a bit. So it doesn't go straight from shadow to highlight or it won't look quite right. Now it's looking a little better. I still want to put a bit more light streaks in it. I feel like I'm losing a little bit here. Sometimes you go back and forth on it. Sometimes it just wants to muck itself up and you're like, okay, well, I got my midtone back, but then I lost my highlight and uh, that's not good. And if you can, as you try to work in highlights, try to make at this stage, a couple of different strands of highlight on some of these thicker, thicker locks of hair. There we go. That's looking a lot better. Excellent. And I still have this highlight up here. Excellent. Good deal. Sweet. So the crown of her head looks good too. Now we need to add even lighter, even lighter highlights because Hair goes up to almost white. I mean, apart from the silver streak in mine, which you can all see like up here, um, hair does go back up toward, let me see, let me tilt my head until I can get it. Mm, there you go. Crown of the head goes very, very pale. So we want that. We want very, very pale. So let us grab our chestnut gold and add some white to it. You can surreptitiously look at people, Graham. Come on. You don't have to sit and stare at them. But like if I'm behind somebody in line out in the sun, I'm looking at their hair to see the reflections in it, especially if they have really pretty hair. I stared at plenty of people when I was making my various skin tone mixes and hair color mixes. You can also just look up stuff online. But the problem with looking up stuff online is that often uh, there's a theatrical lighting um, with some of those models' photos, and sometimes it's it might confuse you as to where the light source is coming from. I'm going to make a much lighter color. I might even add some NMM gold highlight, um, which is my sunshiny color. Yeah, I might want it to go more gold. Yeah, because what white does, when you add the, you'll know the minute you add too much white. Because we could add one drop of white and keep a very vibrant color here. But the minute we add too much white, we suddenly get a bleached out and kind of orangey color. And that's because we do have some, uh, some browns and reds in this uh, chestnut gold. So we want to add a little bit more yellow to suggest sunlight and blonde hair. This is not a blonde hair color as it stands. So I'm going to take this. I started with a 50-50 chestnut gold and white, and then I'm going to add, now it's more like a 1-1-1 chestnut gold, white, NMM gold highlight. And we're going to mix this up and see if adding that yellow helps us. That's looking a little bit more blonde, actually. I think I might need even more yellow though, but at the same time I have to wash it because I'm like, I'm taking it far away from this color. So maybe I need to grab a little bit of this, mix it in and then put a little more yellow in. I also might need to go a little bit more punchy than my NMM gold highlight. I, I might, because this set does have a lot of white in it. Um, I might need to actually go with more of an ochre like Palomino gold, which is if you remember in the triad with chestnut gold makes sense, right? Um, the th closest thing I've got to hand that is close to Palomino Gold is ochre skin. So I'm just going to drop a drop in there. That's going to add a lot of yellow. But that should take us in the direction of blonde. There we go. That's a nice dark blonde. Perfect. That works. So these colors, we'll see how they work. If this takes it up too much, I may have to glaze with my chestnut gold. We shall see. You could have added any yellow there, by the way, that was sufficiently dark. You could have added lantern yellow or candlelight even. 
You just want it to go a little more yellow to be more blonde. Hello, Okorai. Yeah, could use mustard yellow. Yep. Mustard yellow has a lot of ochre in it. So does ogre skin. Alrighty. So let's grab our sharp brush. Well, this is where you want to really start using a brush with a really good tip. You also want to thin your paint a lot. So I'm going to drop, I'm going to, I'm going to probably go close to, um, this is at least going to be a two to one. Let me see how that goes. Mm, my gut says add one more. There we go. Listen to your gut. And if your gut is wrong, yell at it a little bit and then, you know, relent and let it have another try. Your gut is what is probably going to be absorbing a lot of this information on how thin you want your paint. Yeah, she's a nice simple model um, with some nice details. Um, Lulaika, I agree. Yeah, I, her dress was so simple that I was like, I could do something on this. I like the stripey dress actually. Juliana uh, strikes me as somebody who enjoys life and probably uh, enjoys wearing bright colors because she's always picking herbs and flowers. So I thought that that would work. All right, now, now we really need to kind of see if this is the right color. I'm probably gonna try it on this big strand first because it'll be easy to touch up. Let me get this white palette out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm using a very sharp brush. I've got very little paint on my brush. This lets me control the paint. And I'm gonna do a couple of light strands on the hair there and I'm gonna see if I can get uh, get to the point where I'm gonna see if it's too light essentially remember the highlights on top of the head are gonna come up to close to pure white so we're gonna see if this is gonna work for us or if we need to glaze it it might be a little bit too pale um, and again, it's hard to do this on a small model because you can easily lose one of your levels of highlighting at this point. It's so easy to just, uh, cover up a previous layer trying to get these strands to look right. And I don't want her to look blonde. And on the top of the head, this is, this is where actually something about hair comes into place. And this is where it's hard to deal with this chunky sculpt um the chunky hair because really on top of the head hair is usually flat right so when you're looking at say let me get my head right all right so when you're looking at a part the part of my hair up here um you know it's it's smooth right so it's easy it's like almost like this big halo highlight around my hair is like one continuous um color right you can kind of see streaks in it for the hairs but mostly it's like a big blob so you kind of want to paint the top of the head without regard to um, the strands that are sculpted on. You kind of want to take your bright color and all around this halo just kind of paint it on and ignore the depths. And do use kind of a streak that suggests hair. Kind of like that. See how much more real that looks if we just ignore these big dark strands and we just make it a normal highlight. Now suddenly we look a lot more realistic, even on a tiny model. Yeah, Brozard, I did a shiny effect. This whole model, everything that's painted prior, the stripes and the skin, uh, are on other streams. Uh, so if you go to our YouTube channel and you search for her item number, hopefully it'll bring it up and you can watch how I did the stripies. Uh, the other parts of the dress aren't done, essentially. I just highlighted the knees because that's what I had time for during the uh, video and I was showing people how to do a shiny cloth. So, all right. So now we've got that top of the head highlight um, worked in and look how realistic that looks now. Like that, that actually, if you look and you compare, I'm trying to tilt my head in the correct way. There we go. If you look and you compare, you can see the shiny, especially on the far side of my head. See, the, see that line of light that goes right up, right there? and kind of comes around in a circle on the crown of my head. That's what we're trying to do here. Yeah, this mini has a lot of potential. She really does. Uh, I don't know, Grim. Uh, I need to remove some old lines if I was actually gonna... I mean, some of these models too might uh, 
might get sold. I'm painting them for me. Um, although I'm painting them for the stream, you know, but I don't know. Some of many of uh, the other ones are any model that I'm not going to fully complete can get given away eventually at a Reapercon. Any model that I complete, I'm probably going to keep. Or I'm going to keep her and then, you know, probably find a buyer for her, depending on how good they turn out. These days, I tend to only keep things that are landmark models for me. Or that I really, really love. So, all right, so we've got some nice highlight there that's making the hair look lighter on the top. That's a convincing kind of convincing. I think this needs to be a little lighter on the back here. And again, you can suggest some streaks. Let me get this. See if I can get her crown in focus here. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see my little lines, streaks on the hair. You want to kind of look at her a couple different angles and make sure that she looks right. So right now I can tell that I need to bring the streaks down a bit on this side of her hair in the back. The, the hair, the head is a little bit still more um, pointed toward the light here toward the back. So I don't want it to go to the shadow yet. There, that's a little bit better. There we go. Now we really see it. We really feel like there's light hitting the hair now. And I like that. I also think it looks better if I kind of put streaks um, of hair in between all these big clumps and strands. Might not use my highest highlight for that, but I still might bring some of those dark shadows up a little bit because it's more realistic with how hair would actually look. Um, there is a darker color where the two colors meet. It's not dark blue. It's actually the original purple. Um, and that's because I find it easiest. It's actually not correct um, for the for the style of dress I'm doing here. Uh, but it's the easiest way to try to highlight um, and try to bring up patterns. So you could actually turn this into a much more um, finely striped thing if you wanted to. But you should, you should go back and watch the stream. Because I did an entire stream on the stripes for Zard. But yeah, they start out just like this. So there's not actually the the stripe, the dark stripe that you imagine down the side of here is actually just an optical illusion made by putting a light color next to a dark color. Your eye will your eye will see a, a dark stripe where these two meet just because of the contrast between the blue and the purple when there it really is it's just an optical illusion. Then I accentuated that over here when I did things like on the knee here where I was just highlighting, picking up a, kind of a spot highlight there and I left a little bit darker paint on either side. So that continues to enhance the optical illusion. So that's what you're seeing. This is where it's useful to look at um, books like, I always recommend this book and most people just never follow up on it and that's a shame, but uh, Betty Edwards' Color uh, talks about exactly this effect. And also the fact that you can even, if you have lines that are bright colors next to each other, you even get kind of a vibration effect visually. Um, so there's all sorts of funky optical effects that she talks about in that book that can help you understand why something looks a particular way. Now I'm going back to my uh, chestnut uh, gold with the one drop of white and I'm kind of bringing a little bit of my strands uh, north and interrupting my shadow a little bit um, because I want that sun streaked effect, remember? Good, Otter Mama. Yay! Good. Yeah, she's, I, I love the, there are parts in there that I just really love. Like when she talks about the meaning of colors in various cultures and how it varies. That's a really interesting um, part of the book. And there's so many little gems in there that can inform your miniature painting. Like when she talks about how a color will stand out more on a large surface. So using a pale color on a large surface will make it actually look more intense than it actually is just because so much of it is covering the surface. And she talks about all this sort of thing. She's just great. I, I learned a lot of my color theory from Betty Edwards in that book. And then if you read that one and you really like it, then you should pick up um, James Gurney's Color and Light. Yeah, she is great. She's a great instructor. She has a great eye for deconstructing a subject, Dragon Eye, which I really, really um, appreciate.
Yeah. Yeah, gosh, I remember that model. <laughs> when you, it's like the sculptors. They're like, they forget that they've sculpted stuff. Well, we painters forget that we've painted stuff too. So it's like sometimes we run across a model and go, oh yeah, I remember that. Sculptors do the same thing sometimes when you come up to them at a con with a model that's really old. A little bit of uh, bringing up the light there on the strands. Gonna bring this down a little bit. Don't want too much. Now I'm just playing with it. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get some streaks, some lighter streaks in the hair to suggest that sun bleach without destroying my shadow here. So like I'm gonna do just a couple really. Um, and if I feel like I've lost some of my shadow, let's see, I want to get optimal. There we go. Then I'm gonna come back in with my black and brown or um, a mixture of black and brown and russet. Here. You don't want to get too dark, but having a couple of dark shadows also isn't going to hurt you. So that's looking a little bit more realistic on this side. It's harder on the side with the big thick strands. I think I need a little strand to mess up this area here. Got a big dark area here. Kind of want to bring in a strand in the middle there. There we go. And like you did up here, like how we we avoided even dealing with the, the shadow areas, we just painted a, a solid highlight over there. You could also do that down here and it'll make it look better. So if we grab, I'm going to grab a mixture of my chestnut gold and white and then my chestnut gold and uh, NMM gold highlight and white. I'm going to kind of make the colors halfway between. And maybe I want to make it almost a glaze or a wash. I want to thin it way down because I don't want it to be as bold as the highlight on top of the head but I want to tie these areas together. I want to try to maybe paint a little bit between these strands to bring up a highlight and uh, see if I can make it look, lose some of these really dark shadows and see if I can make it look a little more natural. I've got a lot of white in the frame here right now. There we go. Hmm. Losing a little bit. I lost a little bit of my mid-tone. This is why I'll say this again and again on the stream. This is why doing um, complex hair effects on 28 millimeter can be very difficult. You have very little room to work. It's much easier to do interesting things with hair on a bigger model. So I'm going to take my uh, mid-tone. I'm going to just make sure that I've still got some of it in here. Remember the hair is going to look the color that occupies most of the surface. So if I take over a lot of this surface with kind of a blonde color, those that blonde streaks are going to start making your hair look really light. So we got to ask ourselves, well, is that what we want or not? And if not, then we need to keep an eye on that. All right. So I brought that strand down. Now I'm liking that hair side a little bit more. Once again, I think we've got a convincing, um, sun streaked, uh, brown brunette at this point. Um, I'm going to start taking, I'm going to bring up my highest highlight. I'm going to bring up one more highlight out here on the braid. Remember we only did the one, uh, chestnut gold highlight on the braid. So now we've got to take our yellowish blonde color and kind of hit just the tips of the braid strands. Just getting those, uh, those edges up. Leave, remember, you want to leave most of the braid brown, so you got to be really tiny in your highlights. Doesn't mean you don't highlight, just means that you are very tiny in your highlights. And tiny highlights mean a very good brush, thin paint, and very little paint on the brush. Very little. You can see that I barely have a third of the brush dipped in the paint, and you can see that most of the paint is wiped off, right? Like you can see the bristles through it. And that's what lets you draw really fine lines. If you have too much paint on your brush, you're going to only be able to get a thick line, even with a good brush or a blobby line, but you want the paint to be very precise. All 
Um, doesn't look chalky in person, Inara. Um, but if I glaze over it, I'll probably use pure, either pure chestnut gold or if I want to make sure that I keep the brunette look, I'll use this 50-50 mix of russet and chestnut. Whenever you see chalkiness, if you really do see chalkiness, um, the answer is always to glaze with a darker, deeper color. And that fixes it. But yeah, this guy, this is not actually chalky. Um, it may look that way on the camera, but... What is, what is the what, comrade? Yeah, you also can layer light and bring it back. Yep, exactly. Exactly, Grim. So, yeah, she doesn't look too chalky to me in person. But usually chalkiness is a function of uh, grittiness when you over thin your paint. And my th paint is not nearly thinned as much as I could. Um. <laughs> so uh, the, another thing that may give you the illusion of chalkiness though is if you're going from a very dark to a very light highlight quickly and uh, if there's um, not a smooth blend so it's possible this is coming off chalky on camera I want to fade out this middle dark shadow a little bit there that's a little bit better I like that um, oh okay comrade good <laughs> yeah I'm not seeing chalkiness um, I mean there's a little bit up top here but mostly that's I'm getting a little bit of puddling I think and I can fix that I'm gonna bring in my chestnut I just have a, a bit of a sharp demarcation there because I was just blocking that in. But I can fix it by adding a few strands. There. And it's still a little bit broken up. Part of what you may be seeing is chalkiness is also just broken lines where my paint is actually a little thicker than I would normally have done it, so I'm getting some texture. But yeah, you can get the illusion of chalkiness too when it's like not when there's not enough midtone left. So don't lose your midtone, people. Yeah, the trick, I mean, trying to do sunstreaked brown is difficult. I mean, right? Because you're trying to trying to get that look without losing all your brown. You want it to still look brunette. You don't want it to look too light so i've got to be real careful and it's a lot of back and forth trying to get it to work and to look correct that's a little bit chalky there there we go yeah mostly i'm only seeing like texture where i've uh, applied like the blonde like right over a dark area and that's uh not uh, showing as well not looking right all right, so that's that's pretty good actually. I, mean, I kind of like that. Now I need to do the highest highlight. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do that. Um, so we want always to bring hair up to pure white or close to it. If it's if it's gray or white hair, then it needs to come up to pure white. If it is any other color, blonde, I would argue, all also needs to come up to pure white, um, because shiny. If you have another hair color, you can take it just a, an off-white, but it still needs to come up close to white. So there's pure white. For this hair, I'm going to add in just a little bit of this yellow so that I make an off-white. I could just use linen white also, but I tend to like to mix in a color that's already on the model with the white to make the highlight, just to make sure everything is compatible. And I'm going to thin this way down, because this is pure white. You can go down one to one or even more. But the more water you add, the, the less paint you need to add to your brush. So let's see here. That's a, that's a one to one or close to one to two. Let's grab my mixy brush. Um, Reaper Master Series Pure White can take a lot of thinning. That was one of the first things that I ever designed for Master Series. 
and uh, smooth layering was very much the craze at the time, and so everybody was complaining that there was no white that you could thin down sufficiently, uh, and so that was my challenge, doing the paint line. That was very long ago. Yeah, I mean, it's just go a bit. But, I mean, if you overshoot Grim, just go back and touch it up. I mean, I've been touching... You've noticed I've gone back and forth several times between light and dark. That's why it's nice to have this palette with all of my colors open at once. And they're exactly the hues that I need. That's why... That's that's this, you know, what I really like about the Well palette. I could still do a spot blend between the two. And I have. You can see my mucky little brush strokes here. I've mixed these two colors a lot to get those in-between shades. But if I ever need to match my earlier color, I don't need to remix it. It's right here. And uh, it's generally, I mean, it's been oh, about 45 minutes. I'm only now having to add more water to my paint. And I'm only adding like a brush full of water. So that's why I like my well palette. There are definitely ways that I like the wet palette too now. But for this sort of thing, this is what I like. Let's see here. Hmm. Yeah, remember there is freeze because Grigi is uh, giving away stuff for his birthday month. But really, I mean, I don't think of it so much as patience because so many people are blocked about patience. Like, let's face it, so many people believe they do not have patience. And that's just silly. Um, of course you have patience. You, you exercise it all the time with things that you really like or that are important to you. So it's uh, it's not really patience. It's just like slow down and enjoy it. Like, you don't have to be a patient person. You just have to really, you have to enjoy it. Slow down. Don't rush. Alrighty. Now, I have so little paint on my brush. And even then, I'm still getting in that drop. You see that, that blob? No. Alright, yeah, here. Now I've got it. If I can do tiny little lines like that and not get that blob, that's when, I'm, that's when my paint is off my brush enough. I don't care if there's a tiny little lighter area when I pick up the brush. That's perfect. That's the point of layering. But that's how little paint I have on my brush. And sometimes you just have to practice unloading it. And I'm going to add a tiny circle of white highlights around the top of the head. Just bring it up that extra little notch to make it look as shiny as my hair looks under light. The white, the off white or pure white, is really important to get that shiny look. And if I have to refill my brush, let me show you guys. Like, if the, with paint that's this thin, I'm literally dipping the tip in here. The tiniest bit of tip, and then I am cleaning the heck of it off, like, numer numerous times. And I'm kind of dabbing it on the palette. I just want to unload paint. Unload, unload, unload. Until I can do those thin stripes on my hand again. Once I've got that, I'm good. So half of doing detail work... is nailing your consistency and your brush loading. It's not even dependent on having a steady hand. It's mechanical. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Now you can see the light. Now I might mix that white with a little bit of my blondie here. And just bring it down a little bit. Just suggest some strands coming off the top of the head, blending into the rest of it. You don't want to like a you don't want like a harsh line really. The light would be falling naturally down the strands a little bit. So you're using just tiny amounts of paint when you've got it this thin. When you're working on a 28 millimeter anyway. Obviously if you're working on a bust you're going to be using a bit more. There, let's put that 
about and we go now i need to highlight i need to get a little bit of that interior of the hair although you see how dark mine is Look how dark my part is in my there we go now but but when the light is directly shining on it then you don't get as dark so i think i want to bring up the center of her head a little bit i think i'm going to use like this color with my chestnut gold, just a little bit. I want to bring it up. I don't want it. I don't want it to be a black hole. I still want there to be details. So, grabbing a little bit of that, coming in to just highlight a couple of those little areas. I still want it dark toward the middle. I don't want it dark all over. That's better. There we go. That's a little better. There. That's a shiny head. That's that's the Juliana out in the sunshine. And now I'm gonna actually highlight this side because I didn't quite get as many streaks over here as I wanted. Pretty happy with the braid, but I have to get the end of it too. So I wanna bring up with gold on that little ponytail. Boop, you wanna get the tip of it too. Doing a couple of highlights, not just doing a streak of highlight, but doing like a highlight in the center and a highlight at the tip helps to kind of emphasize that the light is not just, it's not straight out. This is a curved area. Curved areas are usually going to have a couple of highlights. There we go, going up almost to white on that. Uh, I'm gonna probably hit the top of the hair. These strands would be uh, pretty light facing facing up. Oh, thanks, Gurgi, wow. Gurgi with the birthday. Hen, thank you for the raid roll, one to explode. Thanks. We're doing hair today. I'm, I'm doing some sun-streaked brown hair on uh, Juliana Herbalist, which is a Reaper model who's very cute. So thanks for coming over, all you raiders. We like to see you guys. I'm working with a, a bunch of colors today, a whole range of browns, because we started with a pretty dark brunette for her, and then I was mixing in like a tan and kind of a golden color um to get bring in the uh, yeah the blonde streaks also i'm having trouble with words today be warned <laughs> all righty so i want to do more i've got that side pretty good let's I do want i do want a little bit more golden color on this side i think i lost a bit of it And remember, your brush strokes should always be in the direction that the hair strands are going. That way, if you leave brush strokes, it'll look natural and slightly soft, like hair should look. By the way, Anne. Yeah. Um, I think I feel like Gurgi inspires me to do my uh, birthday a little differently. Oh yeah, the idea yeah. Of, of taking the entire month and just uh, making it about generosity from my end. I like that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Gurgi is awesome. Kudos, Gurgi. Super, super kudos. Giving presents to other people is better than giving them anyway, or getting them anyway. I agree with you, especially if it's a child. In fact, uh, uh, McKaylee and soon to be my nephew, uh, he's like, I think he's eight. So like, he's in that perfect range where if you give him Super Smash Bros for the his uh, Nintendo Switch, he just goes uh -huh. insane. <laughs> insane. Absolutely loves presents more than anything. Yes, yes, indeed. That's awesome doing a little bit extra highlighting here to really bring out the shininess of the hair that might be a little much this is a, a never-ending war of it since i am a perfectionist it's a never-ending war of uh bring it up knock it back bring it up knock it back until you dial it in and then you're like yeah that like that that's what i want there there and this little bottom strand here i i'm gonna judge is gonna pick up the light because it's kind of turning horizontal 
or to the light. And so it's also a strand that carries into the ponytail. So drawing attention to how the hair is moving. So you can make that kind of judgment call. I'm giving away kids. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just a little bit more messing around, right? With the, with the hair. It is more refined. And I'm bringing up some of those highlights. I've got a couple of them. Uh, it looks a lot smoother because I've been coming back in with my brunette and adjusting it. I want a little bit more, a little bit more strandliness over here. There we go. There we go. Now we're looking really nice, I think. Sweet. I do have to bring her skin tone up more. That is definite. That's a definite now. Maybe I'll work on that since her hair is mostly done and see what I can do. Oh, uh, let's see what I want to use. Maybe I want to use, probably want to use rosy skin. Just make it, might make it look a little, a little more pinker though. So maybe I'll use a little bit of tan skin plus white and just bring it up naturally. Oh, I don't understand them either, dog father. Don't worry about it. Haha, <laughs> that's a good one, Numbat. Oh, did the sound go splotchy there? Splotchy sound, oh no. I am mixing up some uh, tan skin because I want to do a bit of uh, touch up on her skin to make it a little lighter now. Since her hair is so shiny, I'm going to pretend that she's outside and, you know, sweating and sunburned. And so I'm going to do it that way. Uh, I'm going to grab my tan skin. I'm going to add a bit of white to it. I might even add a little bit of this golden color to it. We're going to see. We're going to see. I'm mixing it up. I want to bring up, uh, bring up her skin color just a bit. Trying to mix a couple of colors here. Sorry if uh, the sound borfed for you there. Just picking a couple of tan skin plus white, more tan skin plus white. But, you know, obviously a lot more white here. I only want little puddles of them. I don't need a big puddle. I just want to, uh, at this point, I just want to adjust her skin a bit because I feel that it got a bit dark and I didn't take it up as much as I could have. So I want to bring up a little bit more highlight, especially on her forehead. The forehead is an area that always gets a lot of light. And so when you can utilize that fact and remember to highlight your foreheads. And there usually is a little bit more of a highlight toward the center top and on top of the brow ridge. If you can hit it. Let's see here. That's a little bit. I'm going to need more of my tan skin. You need to make, make sure that you have a shadow color um, mixed up just in case you go too pale. And it's easy to go chalky with skin. So having just my tan skin around to glaze with or to do a spot glaze with if I get too dark on that forehead is really useful because it is very easy to get chalky with skin tones. You know what? Let's go really close. Let's be merciless. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me get merciless here. Oh, nope. It's going to force me to force it to tell it exactly where I want it. One second. There we are. There we are, no fear, right? We're gonna just uh, show you all my terrible painting and just go for it. All right, so the forehead got a little chalky. I'm taking some really thin down tan skin and applying it in a little spot glaze to smooth things out. You can see how I went very light there for a second. And so I'm gonna knock that back a little bit with the glaze to smooth it in. Just putting a thin layer or two of tan skin over it, took that bright highlight on top of the brow and, and knocked it down very well. Yeah, now this is a camera. Exactly, right? This is why we love our document cam. Love the document cam. Um, lately, I've been doing this. I've been getting really close. When I did my skin tones on uh, for the Patreon, 
that I showed everybody earlier. Those of you who are not on my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash painting big. And I just did a 28 millimeter skin tones and I used this model and I got this close on the video. So you can see what I did. Um, so do, if you are not a patron, feel free to go over there. It's only the $2 level. You get a half an hour video on how to do awesome smooth skin tones on 28 millimeter for two bucks. And of course, there's a lot of other $2 content in there also, PDFs and videos from two years worth almost of me doing Patreon. So heads up if you're interested. All right. So one thing I didn't do with her that I need to do is I did, I hit the middle of her nose, but I didn't get the little nostrils on the side here. There. That adds a little bit. You got to get the shape in the nose. And I've got, she's kind of, she's really squinting with the one eye and looking at the plant with the other eye. So got to kind of like keep that in mind. <laughs> Thanks, Image. <laughs> um, that's the duelist. It's a female duelist. I forget her name, Lady Daredago, but she's really awesome. She's an elven duelist. She's got two, two blades and a fancy cape designed by Talon, of course. So the concept art for her is wonderful. Um, you could use her as a two blade rogue. Um, pretty easily. She'd be a good urban rogue or urban warrior with uh, a twin blade fighting, fighting style. Um, I think she's super awesome. So I, uh, and she's got a really good face. So Bobby, I think, sculpted her. Um, I could not find her card. Or I would show it. Her, uh, you know what? I'm going to get even, even brighter. There we go. Let's turn some, let's get some light on this subject. Sometimes the camera light is too much, but on something like this where we're trying to get really close, and where she's got her arm in front of her, I think it's really useful. So we're going to get that chin a little brighter. But you see how, as I bring up the face highlights now, I still get that ruddy look. But it's much more in line now with the, with the highlights on the hair. So now she looks more like she's sunlit. Um, and she still has a ruddy skin color, so I haven't lost my sunburned skin. Do need to kind of define her collarbone here. Sometimes things get a little mucky in here around the collarbone. And you have to, the collarbones, you have to kind of like look for where the hollow of the throat is. And get that tendon highlighted that comes down the neck. Don't forget these little details. A lot of the sculptors, now that they're doing digital, they can actually do these details. They can sculpt them. So, oh, there we go. Yeah, three, eight, six, seven. Actually, I started her uh, because she was a metal mini. Uh, and David asked me if I would do more metal to go along with my bones. Um, because sometimes you can get a little sharper detail on the face with metal. So that's why I wanted to use a metal model for the face on my Patreon. Although Juliana here has a really good face in, in bones, I gotta say. All right, so I did that. I'm feeling like I might need to mix up a little bit of a shadow here. Hold on. I, uh, I got a little bit too strong with this uh, U-shape highlight. And I need to nail it back. So I'm going to grab some 9109 ruddy leather, which might not be red enough. I might need to add some, some red in there, but I'm going to mix it with my tan skin and uh, see if I get close enough. And I, what I want to do is I want to go back and kind of give her that nice little hollow, like right in the hollow of her throat. That's a little bit light still. Need it darker darker because of the shadow on her neck is quite dark in the sunshine. I might need to just paint over it and go over. There we go. Well, I wiped it out, but now I can come back in and make it more subtle. So that's good. Hey, how do, how's, how is it roll one to explode? How are you? Things are awesome. <laughs> oh no, you hadn't followed yet. Well, thank you. Thank you for following. Things are great. Thank you for the raid. We're doing, we were doing hair. So we're doing a uh, sun streaked brunette hair on our Juliana herbalist. I've got to put her card. I keep forgetting. I keep moving the card out of the frame, but that's, this is the model that we're working, uh, sculpted by Bobby Jackson. It's fantastic. Um, she's a little herbalist who's just picked a plant and has no idea what it is. Um, or maybe she does have an idea, but had to look, uh, look more. <laughs> that's all good. You are now following. So you are, you are just cool. It's all good. So now I'm highlighting. I just decided because I had a little extra time. I usually go till uh, 11 East Coast time. Um, 
So I uh, wanted, decided I would touch up her skin tones too and talk a little bit about that. I'm just trying to get some of these. Ah, too much paint in my brush. Do you see that? Now take, get some water and scrub it off. You can, if you move fast, you can always erase. There's always an erase button. It involves dipping your brush in water and hitting, hitting the model with it and scrubbing a little bit. But we did get the face cleaned up a little bit more. And now I'm a lot happier with that face with that. Ex see what a difference, like an extra layer of highlighting makes when it comes down to that. She could be admiring the plant. This is true. Oh yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Roll one. I'm glad you love the paint. That is, that is my life's work for Reaper. Like that is uh, what I spent so many years doing for Reaper. So I really appreciate it. I love hearing that. I love hearing from painters that they really enjoy my paint and that it makes them, you know, that they they feel they can do great stuff with it. That's, that's really what it's all about for me. If you're going to leave a legacy to the community, you know, that's, that's what you want to hear. Alrighty. So let's see. Yeah, we're, they we're in focus. So yeah, I have to fix the hollow river throat a little bit. I, uh, I lost the highlight over here. I lost the shadow there. I have kind of the collarbones in, but this one's a little bit off center. So, you know, when you're dealing with tiny little details like this, it gets uh, very easy to kind of blurp them up. But it is also easy to um, to just kind of layer or blend or glaze over that surface and kind of return it to kind of a neutral state so that you can re-highlight, um, as I just have. Yeah, brush put aside just to do this, the dip and scrub. Yeah, I tend to just, mine has so little paint on it when I'm doing this sort of stuff that I just tend to reach for it and use the brush that I've got and rinse it out and reload. All right, so let's see here. So she's got a little bit of her chest on here. My paint is, a, I got a little bit too much paint on the brush there, but I can come back in and kind of fudge that out. Yep, getting toward the end of the stream, I can tell. Sometimes the paint is just like, after a certain point, <laughs> after you've been painting for an hour and a half, it helps to take a break. That's a useful thing to know, actually. And it's true of many, many uh, different things. If you're doing a really high concentration um, task, usually an hour and a half is about where your sweet spot is as far as uh, being at your optimal level. And then you want to take a break and come back to it. Um, so Justin, do we want to like do uh, Gurgi's giveaway as I'm just kind of like uh, messing around uh, with skin tones here? Absolutely. Real quick, uh, hashtag free for any of the newcomers. Um, obviously, if you needed to follow, that uh, may, may not be able to get in in time since there's a little bit of a delay there. Yeah, Gurgi uh, has his birthday this month, and so he's decided to do giveaways all month to celebrate his birthday on Fridays. So welcome to Friday and welcome to Gurgi's first giveaway. Just putting a little bit of a highlight here, a bit of a highlight there. She's still got reddened skin, but she's a little bit more uh, shiny now. Got a little bit more highlight going on. Also, I think for the uh, simplicity's sake of, uh, of the back end for, for what we're doing for the giveaway here, yeah, um, it's going to be random as to who gets the, um, the paint kit. Oh, okay. So we'll just do a general roll and then we'll uh, roll a D4. Well, but, well, basically what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to draw the four names and uh -huh. then of those four names, one of those people decided on Cindy's side will get the paint kit. Oh, that makes so sense. So it'll be interesting. So that means that come Monday when you guys are say Monday, uh, let's say Wednesday, assuming it delivers in a reasonable amount of time, uh, make sure to hop in the show and tell us who got the paint kit. We'll make it kind of a fun reveal. I'm just keep kind of like the uh, the baby and the king cake, right? Yeah, exactly. Kingfisher games. Hey, got your first boss of space marines. Have fun with those. They can be hard to highlight. <laughs> they can also be fun to paint, depending on what they are. I, I painted a lot of space wolves, so I get you. Not officially till the end of the month, so this is your build up to your birthday, Gurgi. That's awesome. Oh, good. Thank you for joining my Patreon, dog father. That's great. Yes, watch the thing. Yeah, right. everybody, everybody get that hashtag free in. I just, I actually just drew our four names. Oh, awesome. Kingfisher, I love salamanders, actually. I painted some for eBay a long time ago. I love the green. Sweet. All right, you ready for these uh, these names here? All right, what are the names? 
We have Achilles Blade 2. Yay, Achilles Blade! Ingenia 42. Ingenia? Congrats. Nomad Zeke. Yay, Nomad Zeke! And Samurai Jack 325. And Samurai Jack. Awesome. You are all awesome people, and I'm so happy that you won. Fantastic. Congrats. So remember, next Friday, same bat time, same bat channel. Yes, we'll have some more. We'll and have uh, some don't more. forget that as soon as you get your giveaway in, if you got the paint kit, um, go ahead and, you know, hop in the channel and tell everyone. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I got the paint kit. I must, you know, the other um, thing to remember is next Friday is also our AMA and a giveaway for us. Assuming Courtney gets back to Justin. And Justin saw my email and forwarded it to Courtney. <laughs> Oh, no problem. Yeah, I, I must have spelled his name wrong because it bounced. So if you could ask him if those particular models, um, I gave them, they're in the email. There's just three uh, that I wanted to ask about to make sure before we started giving stuff away. Okay. To make sure we got um, a few. Also, if you won, don't forget, it's giveaways at reapermini.com. Yes. Uh, you can always check the the uh, YouTube video, typically that gets put up on YouTube. Sometimes it has the same information, but it written down. Yep. Um, but giveaways at reapermini.com. Yes, indeed. So make sure to email, otherwise you can't get your stuff. We have to have your address and stuff. Correct. So in this case, if it's the same email that you want, if you're getting a gift certificate, if it's the same email that you want that uh, sent to that you send email from, then that's fine. Just specify that. But otherwise, uh, in the body of the text, I would give your name, your address, and then the email that you want the gift cert sent to in the event that that's what you would. Indeedy. But, uh, yeah. That's All right. It. So Don't do need we, to start uh, looking for a raid yeah, here, you probably, you probably need to start looking for a raid. Oh, and today I think uh, Justin also has a crap ton of work to do. Like, uh, Reaper Land is at 3 p.m. And, uh, uh, Reaper Land, and we have to uh, shoot a video for ReaperCon for informative sake after Reaper Land. And oh, then we have wow. Reaper Errant. Wow. And, oh, yeah, my day is going to be full. Oh, yes. and uh, Ed, uh, Ed wanted me to edit a video together that uh, basically we shot on, about a year ago, I think, at this point. Maybe even longer. Wow. And uh, I have to go find the assets for it and make sure I still have it because it's been so long. We never touched it, but now he wants to touch it. So. Oh, well, there you go. Well, that's where, you know, leave, keeping everything uh, plays into, uh, you know, your favor. Oh, our favorite uh, body painter is on right now, actually. She's oh, is she? What is she minute. doing? Let's see here. We do love body painter, and I was, and I was uh, just talking about skin tones, so, you know. We should ask her, we should ask Sky Daddy to do, um, to do tan lines. Like, you know, like paint her skin like it's, like it's sunburned, but then do tan lines. That would be kind of funny. Okay. Oh, and Reaper John is telling you all how to claim your prizes. So pay attention to the chat if you, uh, have any doubts about how to do that. And I'm going to keep, uh, dabbing paint on this model. Oh, this is her first uh, stream as a Twitch partner, actually. She oh, just got partnered. Awesome. Good. Congrats to her. As That's far exciting. as who she's, I don't know who she's painting, actually. I can't tell what it is yet. Well, that's cool. We get in very early then. Usually we're in when she's, like, well along. But she's so sunny. She's a good Friday person to uh to raid because she's so happy and sunny and she's got such a great bright disposition and she just makes you feel awesome and then you head into the weekend and everything is great yeah i remember when we got twitch partner it was uh it's pretty awesome it was one of those things where i felt like all my the culmination of my hard work for this channel has this all came to fruition right it was kind of nice absolutely so awesome, people. Well, then, if we're going to read Sky Daddy, go over and say hello. She's a body painter, but a lot of the shading and highlighting that she does to over-accentuate details on her skin is the same sort of stuff we do on miniatures. So, weirdly, it's still informative. <laughs> and, like I said, she's a really fun, sunny personality. She's uh, she's just a great person to make you feel great going into the weekend. So, say hello. She knows us. She's She wants to paint some miniatures. <laughs> so, uh do do give her our love. There we go. Do, do, do. And we did our hair, so we're good. See, it's not blonde, right. it's brown, but it's sun streaked. So yay, we did it, guys. We did it. I've never done this before. It's fun. <laughs> Don't forget to use your Reaper Radio modes and spread the Reaper love. And uh, most importantly, guys, 
We'll see you at 3 p.m. for Reaper Land, and you guys have to keep being awesome. That's yes, keep being awesome. It is a requirement. Have a fun weekend, everybody. I'll see you Monday. All right, bye. See you guys later.